Alan, that's uh, quite, a, quite a high dividend you're sh sharing with some of your investors. Uh, run me through what you're getting in terms of market signals that might be able to give you an indication as to the sustainability of both revenues and the dividend for the remainder of this year. So I think when we look at the market, I think in 2020, achieving 1% growth in what was an exceptional uh, year in terms of the economy uh, was pretty good. On the profit side, we, we, we declared profits of around 34 million dirhams. If we normalize those profits, because we made some fairly significant one-time adjustments in quarter three, the profit would have been around 100, 117 million dirhams. As we look at the market moving forward, obviously, you know, the, uh, the impact of COVID continues to ebb and flow. Um, we do expect to see it improving as the year goes on. And obviously, with the recent acquisitions that we've made, obviously, we're looking forward to uh, uh, improve financial returns in 2021. So you, you would say the 16.5% is not necessarily a one-off? Look, the way we're looking at it is given the growth trajectory and the strategic agenda that we have as, as Axia, um, we wanted to be consistent with what we've done in the past. Uh, and we also wanted to, to, to show that we have confidence in our growth agenda moving forward. So that was the rationale behind this year. I think as we look forward, what we're saying is, obviously we'll have to review the dividend policy depending on, on, on the results, but, but certainly we expect to continue to, to provide value for shareholders, both in terms of targeting to, to improve the, the, the share price, but also the, uh, uh, the dividend. Uh, how much cash does that leave in your war chest for potential <laughs> deals? What are you looking at? Where are the priorities? So what we've been trying to do, so we've made three acquisitions in the, or announced three acquisitions in the last month, two, two that we're currently integrating. One is, 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 is approved subject to uh, regulatory sign off. And we hope to have that consolidated in quarter two. Looking forward, what we've said is we, we've predominantly been a UAE based business. Um, historically, we've made some investments internationally, which we consider to be uh, subscale. And what we're trying to do now is to, to scale up in those markets where, uh, or where we're looking for is to scale up in those markets where we already have, uh, where we already have presence. If you look at the acquisitions we've made, we've moved into the snacking space with the dates acquisition, plus also the fresh bakery acquisition in Kuwait. Uh, and also on the Nabil acquisition, we're also moving towards processed protein. So that gives you an indication of the kind of uh, categories that we're looking to play in and the markets that we're keen to, uh, to expand our presence. What's been the feedback from ADQ, who are your majority shareholders, around some of these expansion opportunities and uh, you know, just upscaling a lot of your presence across these locations? I think we're very, I mean, actually went through a lot of change last year, obviously new new owners in, in ADQ or majority owners in ADQ. We also obviously announced a new board, new CEO, new CFO. We've made some f fairly significant in interventions in the leadership team, all with an intent to grow. The strategy that we've aligned with the board is we want to move Agthea more in the direction of the consumer product, product space, uh, branded consumer products. And we also want to increase our our, our regional footprint. So that's the strategy, very much aligned with the board, obviously supported by, uh, by ADQ as well. And I think the, the moves that we've made already shows the, uh, the level of commitment we have to that strategy. Would you say we're going to see more deals by Agdia in 2021 than in 2020? We, look, we continue to look at the markets. Obviously, our priority right now is to integrate the businesses that, we, uh, that, that we've taken on board. And we're, we're moving ahead very rapidly on that. And we've already made, uh, made great, great progress in that regard. As with any uh, company, if there are good deals available at the right price, and that's the critical uh, criteria, it needs to be accretive to our business and needs to match with our strategic agenda. So hopefully, we'll continue to see more deals, but we'll only do it if it makes sense. Uh, Alan, I look at uh, your price to earnings ratio. I look at how your stock's doing compared to some of the peers. And uh, you're, you're behind the curve, as it was. Uh, what is your message to minority shareholders uh, who are clearly trying to get their heads still around uh, this new structure that you have at the company? 
So I think historically over recent years, Agthea has probably uh, un underperformed the market. The share price has, has been under somewhat stress. I think what I've seen since I've joined the business is a huge amount of goodwill uh, regionally towards Agthea. A lot of people recognize the potential of this company, um, where we should be, what we should be doing. I think our strategy reflects what we're now trying to achieve. I think if we carry on with the progress that we're making, we believe we have the right talent in the leadership team. You know, we're on a transformational journey in terms of how we how we run the business and the categories we want to play in. So the message for shareholders would be, you know, look at what we're doing. I, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're very clear in, in what we're trying to achieve. And I think, you know, over the over the next 12 to 18 months, we'll we'll see that coming through in the financials. Alan, when I walk into a supermarket, uh, the selection that I have in front of me around bottled water just keeps getting more and more varied. And it's overwhelming as a consumer because, you know, I don't need to choose from 30 different brands of bottled water. But the reality is that's something you're going to feel around pricing pressure and competition. Does that mean your focus switches more to some of your food brands? Uh, just run me through what the strategy is. So look, water is a huge part of our business. I think our recorded, reported revenue for last year was close to, to 800 million. Um, bulk of it is coming in UAE. We see home delivery growing in UAE as a result of the, the pandemic. Um, moving forward, yes, our food business grew 32% last year. Consumers got back in touch with their kitchen, so we started to see offtake improving in that regard. We've also expanded our distribution on our food. So certainly as we, we look at acquisitions, it's certainly more in the, the food spaces we've already moved. Um, but water internationally is for Agthea is still subscale, so we see opportunity to scale up there um, and to continue to grow market share internationally. But obviously food groups, food in the short term is, is our immediate priority. 